We can imagine organic chemicals as these kinds of characters. Our adventuring protagonist is our substrate. Different substrates can be sorted into classes, which can undergo different transformations. Specifically, our heroes can take on incredible new forms through the substitution and elimination reactions we've been learning for the past few episodes. So sites like Gona show us that hominids could get meat, but it's hard to tell how often they ate it. Another site, called Kanjera South in Kenya, is the first to show early members of our genus, most likely Homo habilis or Homo erectus, eating meat on a regular basis. The site dates back two million years, and it includes bones that have been cut into or broken open with stone tools spanning hundreds of thousands of years. Let's see how you might share data about yourself in pursuit of science in the data point. Say you see a flyer. Think of these questions as three moves that combine to make up a dance, a cool fighting combo, or a secret handshake. Is where each grapheme represents a syllable, known as a syllabary. In a syllabary, there's a different symbol for, say, Meanwhile, on land, dinosaurs dominated, with the mega raptor known as Australovenator perched at the top of the food chain. And around 95 million years ago, on one of those Australian riverbanks, a group of small dinosaurs were going about their business when they were suddenly interrupted by the arrival of a big theropod heading straight towards the flock looking for an easy meal. The small dinosaurs panicked and stampeded away, running behind the predator to avoid becoming lunch. But what if they hadn't? What if instead the theropod wasn't a theropod at all, but a big plant eater? And the small running dinosaurs weren't running away from it, they were just running. It's a talent we can acquire with practice. As an example, let's start with the precipitation reaction between aqueous silver nitrate and an aqueous sodium chloride solution. If we draw from our previous understanding of chemical reaction types, we can also classify this as a double displacement reaction. So we know what the products will be a solid precipitate of silver chloride and aqueous sodium nitrate. This final written reaction is our molecular equation. Let's try our ion vision next to figure out what's happening to the ions. This shows that silver nitrate and sodium chloride have the free ions of silver, nitrate, sodium, and chloride. As for the products, we just have ions from sodium nitrate, since the precipitate silver chloride is an insoluble solid and therefore it doesn't dissociate. They use analytics tools that collect information sent by your device, including the web pages you visit. And they may use device identifiers on your phone to track your browsing habits to serve you personalized content or ads. With Instagram or any app you use with the right clause hidden in all that legal jargon, your info can be sold to third parties over and over again. Then advertisers can sell you more, better targeted ads. So when you absentmindedly check the box to accept God knows what terms and conditions, you're often also signing away your right to privacy. Right now, that info mainly goes to advertisers, but you can see how our ambivalent attitude around privacy could make us vulnerable to bad actors, or say, foreign influence on things like, you know, presidential elections. Thanks, Thought Bubble. Some ponds where the female lays eggs have predators, and some do not. After the eggs hatch into tadpoles, gray tree frog tadpoles can sense predators in the water through chemical cues. In pools with predators, some tadpoles develop larger reddish tails and have a tendency to hide at the bottom of the pond and are therefore better able to avoid predators. In contrast, tadpoles that grow up in ponds without predators are smaller, have larger mouths, are more active, and grow faster. In general, the smaller, active tadpoles are more successful in ponds without predators. Think of catapults, trebuchets, and siege towers. These types of war machines and military structures have been found as far back as the 11th century BCE by the Babylonians and Assyrians. 